the club manager's office, and they said, hey, you won't believe this. Don't worry. So what? They said, it doesn't matter how many people show up. There's one person coming that's going to make all the difference in the world. And I said, oh, really? Well, who is this person? He goes, Ahmed Erdogan, the founder of Atlantic Records, is flying in on a helicopter in the snowstorm to see this band. And at that time, I didn't know Jason Flom. I didn't know anybody in the industry. I didn't know any managers. I didn't know anybody. All I know is I had been the hugest Led Zeppelin fan my whole life. Like I could name any track, any record. I made bets with people on which side, which track, what, what side of the vinyl it was, everything. Huge Zeppelin fan, huge Atlantic Records fan, anything Atlantic Records. So of course I knew who Ahmed Erdogan was. Floored, excited, freaking out. I mean, this was the biggest thing. So he shows up with Toon Jerem and their wives and the fur coats and their suits. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I mean, I grew up in a small town of Alpha, New Jersey, which like we weren't exposed to anything out of the normal. It was just our small little community. So even going to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which was 40 minutes away to college was a big deal. So here's this guy who I watched on television and read about and seen record uh, credits about and read about, and he's coming to my show. And he's standing here now. I was like, okay, I, just, I gotta keep my cool. So the show goes on, the band's really excited. And um, I remember watching Ahmed Erdogan with his suit jacket off down in the audience. I think the audience was like maybe 70 people at most, 75 people in a 1200 venue, capacity venue. And he's down there rocking out, enjoying himself, having a good time, his shirt sleeves rolled up. He was a cool dude. I was just like, oh my God, this is like amazing. I mean, I don't even think I knew how big at that time that moment was. All I knew is I was just floored. After the show, we went to the backstage apartment. Of course, again, I had to do the Holly stuff, which is I had made handmade, hand-painted Skid Row shirts for them. Um, I had the morning call article, like, uh, I don't know how many, several maybe a dozen copies of the newspaper laying around folded open details <laughs> folded open to the article interview I had done with the band about two weeks previous. And then also I'd made a bunch of food, like some kind of chicken wings or something. And I don't know, I just made sure that they had, you know, a nice little spread of food and Ahmed's hanging out up there talking to them and, and meeting with them and they're just all having a great time. And I just silently watched. I mean, I just always had this intuition to just be there, just observe, don't be up in it, just be there at the right place. And I was, I was standing, I can still see the vision now. You know, Snake was on Ahmed's right and I was standing to the left of Ahmed and he, was talking to Snake about Atlantic Records and his career. And, and I remember him saying to Snake, you sign with Atlantic Records, you'd never worry about money again. <laughs> That's the best impression I can do. But it was amazing. This was history in the making. I didn't even realize it at that point. Of course, again, no experience in the business, so I didn't know the magnitude. All I knew was this was amazing. This guy's incredible. This band's incredible, and I want to do what that guy does. I, I want, what does he, I want to be him someday. That's what I want to do. This is just truly great.